the theoretical framework is very important, but maybe we don't know yet why do we need a theoretical framework. Well, as the name it says, it's a framework. It's like when you have a picture and then you have a frame around that, yeah, that will be a picture frame. So in here, this framework is the frame that will be around your work. It's like, how can you structure your work? So uh, I have two interesting quotes from here. And the first one says that, uh, the lack of a theoretical framework is the most frequently cited reason for our editorial decision not to publish a manuscript. That means that maybe the work is interesting, but there is not a framework. It's not really kind of um, limited, right? It's, it seems like uh, a lot of things that maybe the author is writing, but there is not a framework that can guide the whole discussion. Uh, another interesting framework that I experienced myself is in here it says doctoral students live in fear of hearing these now famous words from their thesis advisor this sounds like a promising study but what is your theoretical framework and that is totally fine it's very difficult to choose a framework or it's very complex because you will commit to that framework for the rest of your research of, of, of your project so it's a very serious decision and today we're going to, to make that decision so um, in, in, in a few words, the framework, the theoretical framework will structure the study, your research project, and it will give you the guidelines of how you are going to do your case study, and because this is mostly for quality. I will show you some examples of uh, frameworks. So over there, I think I will illustrate it there. Uh, of course, there are advantages and disadvantages. I think the advantages are clearer and we just need to be careful with the disadvantage. So the first advantage is that it really helps us to theorize the empirical findings without a framework that is very difficult. Without the framework, then the case study can be just a case study, something that you read on the newspaper or something like that. But if the framework will help you to theorize things. Then uh, the second point is what I said, it helps you to structure the research plan. It gives a structure to that. And also, it provides a comparable organization in terms of the writing, which is conceptualized as something that is called materiality. So it allows other people to understand your work from a broader perspective. It means like if you are studying um, a specific organization in Tepatitlan, if you use the framework, then someone who is from Russia might be able to understand the theoretical uh, contribution of your paper. Otherwise, it's just reading news from Tepatitlan, right? So the theoretical framework will help you to do that. And finally, the disadvantages, we, uh, which I think we, we only need to be careful about this, is it's impossible to, to avoid. But the frame, all frameworks have limitations. So there is not perfect framework. It's more about which framework fits better for your data and your object. And second, sometimes the framework <laughs> forces us to be quite biased on the results. So sometimes we just want to follow the framework so close to what it's written that we sometimes, I don't know, we, we can be biased on our findings. And that is not what we should be doing. If we find something that contradicts even the framework, we should criticize the framework too. Um, so just uh, a, a few uh, tips for choosing the right framework. I think the number three should be the number one. <laughs> Read and understand the framework. It's very important that you understand the framework completely. Uh, you need to read about the framework uh, I mean the, 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 the explanation of the framework, but also other papers or other studies that have used the framework. That is very important. And here it, 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 it turned into Spanish. But make sure that the framework fits with your theoretical discussion and also with your data. It's like if the framework talks about um, the individual level, make sure that you have data to show that the individual level. If the framework talks about institutional, the institutional level, the industry level, make sure that you have data to talk that discussion. So maybe right now you're a bit confused and maybe you're still saying, but what is a framework? I don't really know what is a framework. So I will show you a few examples of what is a framework. Let me change to 
uh, Chrome where I have a few examples. So uh, I think I can start in, in this one. I think oh, this one. the levers of control framework is very famous. It was uh, proposed by Robert Simons from Harvard in 1994. It is very, very um, uh, famous and popular. It's the same guy who um, designed the balance scorecard. So, you know, balance scorecard is super popular everywhere. This is maybe not as famous as the balance scorecard, but it's also very used everywhere. So this framework, it's about um, management control. So according to Simons, management control can be framed in these four levers of control. It, they're like uh, systems of control, he also calls to that those things. So he says that there are four systems of controlling an organization. So the first one is the belief systems, which is mainly like values. Why, what do we care about? Like for example, in tech, we care about students and we care about research and we care about um, the ne doing networks with the industry. So that's mainly the beliefs from tech. Then boundary system. Boundary system is why, where we don't want to be. So for instance, maybe in tech, we don't want to be um, an, a university that has, I don't know, a million students. We don't want to be something like that. We don't focus on big numbers. We focus more on quality. So that would be the boundary system. We don't want to go in there. And then we have interactive control and diagnostic control. Diagnostic control is like the typical control that we have maybe uh, some financial measures, like maybe tech has that too, like maybe the return of our investment or maybe the, uh, I don't know, profitability, something like that. Those are the typical diagnostic control systems. But the interactive systems are different because interactive systems are systems that are aimed to react according to what happens on, 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 on practice. So for instance, during Tech Mint, you know, this implementation of the new system, there are quite a few interactive control systems, like maybe um, when there is a new subject that is about to be delivered or, or taught by a teacher, uh, it says that this should happen, like maybe class number one, the student should do this, class number two, the student should do this, class number three, this, and class number four, it depends on the outcome from the project with the real life um, company. It's like in semester A, for example. So this kind of flexibility that is not on class number four, this is going to happen. It's not like that it says on class number four, this can happen, but it actually needs to uh, react according to whatever happens with the, with the socio formador. So in that case, the interactive control system are the systems that are designed to react over something happening. So according to this, uh, if, if you decide to use this framework for your research, then you can categorize your control systems in the organization that you are studying. So this is where the framework becomes very, help, very helpful because then you can study each system kind of separately and then you can um, evaluate the 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 effect of digital transformation on each system so that's why i say that it guides you and it structures the research because if you have these four dimensions then you can you can study how digital transformation changed the belief systems and then maybe how it changed or didn't change the boundary systems maybe didn't change it how did it change the diagnostic control systems and how did it change the interactive control systems? And maybe in the end, the conclusion can be like, digital transformation affects these two systems, but these two systems don't really change. They are just translated from paper to digital, but these two beliefs and boundaries, they, they do change. That can be an interesting outcome, an interesting finding. So as you can see, the, it's very, interesting and it's very helpful to use a framework because without the framework and you might define the control system as everything that helps you to achieve a goal but how do you study that right like how are you going to um, show that there is an effect from digital transformation on control systems it's very it's very complicated 
I will stop the video in here because I think it's taking too long and I will do another video with the next two examples.